Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome to my poker vlog. My name is Brad Owen, also known as the giraffe because uh, of my long neck and I'm just a naturally kind of lanky guy. Uh, I know that's a weird way to start off a vlog, but that's how we're going to do things, I think. So yeah, my plan for this is we're going to analyze poker hands that I play and also I'm going to give a little bit of insight on what it's like to be a professional poker player in Las Vegas. Uh, I'm a 2-5 player mainly. I play in the deeper 2-5 games here in town and then I also play 1-2 and 1-3 and then every once in a while I'll kind of take a shot at the 2-5 five, or the 5-10 games. Um, I think if you're a 1-2 or 2-5 player you'll probably get the most value out of this and uh, hopefully you'll improve a lot. I'm definitely not the best 2-5 player in town and oftentimes not even the best 2-5 player at the table but um, I'm pretty good. I have a decent win rate and uh, decent hourly. I'm excited uh, for what's to come. At the very least, this should be pretty entertaining. Uh, I have a unique and interesting life, I think, and hopefully you'll think so too. Um, my life sort of peaked at the age of four when I was in a Little Caesars Pizza Hut commercial, and then it kind of slowly just went downhill from there. Um, I'll give you, uh, I'll take a snapshot and uh, of the clip that I was in and you should be able to figure out which one I am. I will give you a hint, I'm not the black one. Uh, anyways, I have zero experience with creating content and posting it on YouTube, so I don't have any, any technological skills at all, really. Uh, video editing is gonna be a challenge, but I'm looking forward to you know kind of just doing something new that is poker related, but still, you know, completely different than uh, other you know, things that I've worked on. You know, I'm going to be making some big mistakes in the poker hands that I make. Feel free to comment and uh, give some feedback, I guess, on, on how I should have played the hand. I'm certainly open to criticism, and I hope that we can all just get be better together. Uh, I, I flew in tonight from San Francisco, which is uh, where I'm from originally. My folks are out there and we just had Thanksgiving together, so I'm pretty tired, but tomorrow we're going to go out to the Red Rock, we're going to joke around with uh, some old guys and hopefully put up a W. Uh, one final thing before we go, I think I should probably introduce my cat. Uh, this is Cosmo. He's pretty sweet. He just got his hair cut today. He's looking pretty good. Anyways, he says, what's up? And uh, yeah, we'll see you guys tomorrow. All right, bye. Hey, what's up guys? It's a little after 8 a.m. We are getting our day started. We're gonna head out to The Rock and uh, hopefully win some money. Hey buddy, how's it going? I gotta go to work, but don't worry, I'll be back. See you, bud. Check out the whip. Oh yeah, that's right. 2003. Lexus ES300, pretty sweet year for the Lexus. All right, let's get going. So if you don't live in Vegas, you might not have heard of Red Rock. It's a few miles off the strip. It's a cool little casino. It's a locals casino. Everyone knows each other. Everyone's really, really friendly. Uh, there's usually one or two other pros in the game in the morning. And then uh, the rest of the players are recreational players that that uh, don't quite know what they're doing pre-flop. There's a lot of limping and a lot of limp calling. Very few three bets. Uh, everyone plays straightforward for the most part. Not too much bluffing. And I'm not going to be bluffing that much either. I'm going to be playing pretty tight, pretty pretty solid, um, with the occasional uh, well-timed bluff, hopefully. Haven't played in about a week, so I might be a little bit rusty, but I'm excited to get in there.
All right, we just arrived at Red Rock. The game hasn't quite started yet, so we're gonna start that up here shortly. Uh, I'm pretty excited to do this. I'm not sure if I'm gonna be playing differently, you know, because I'm gonna be videotaping my hands or, or how that's really going to affect me. But uh, I'm feeling good and um, I'm excited. All right. So they say it's bad luck to be superstitious. So I try not to be, but I do believe in karma. So usually on my way into a casino, I'll try and find like a little piece of trash that I'll just pick up and make the place a little cleaner, a little nicer. I don't think it's gonna really help uh, the cards that I get, but it can't hurt, right? Welcome to the rock. That was my best Sean Connery impression. There weren't enough people on the list for the 2-5 to get started right away, so I went ahead and jumped in the 1-2. Alright, finally playing some poker here. Pick up the old pocket sixes. I believe uh, there's one limper. I raise. Eight. Eight dollars. Raise to eight, I believe, and I take it down. Next hand. Oh, are those rockets? Those can't be rockets. B Rad doesn't get rockets. Raise. Oh, but he does get rockets. And uh, the under the gun player, he uh, limped in. I make it ten. I get two calls, actually the hijack and uh, my buddy in the small blind who also plays for a living. The flop comes 10, 8, 6 with two hearts. It's kind of a wet flop. Uh, my buddy Brian checks to me. I bet about half pot, bet $17. And both players fold. And I uh, take it down. And what's the four kind of all right, I'm under the gun here with the old ace king of hearts. I bet seven. <laughs> and uh, everyone folds. Show my buddy. In the big blind now with pocket kings. There's a few limpers in there. I make it 15. The first limper calls while the other players all fold. So this guy, he's an older guy. He limped in an early position. Um, I haven't played with him. Could have uh, you know a pretty wide range here. But the flop comes 10-6-4. I bet small, I bet 15, which is less than half pot. I want to keep him in there with uh, a lot of his holdings. I'm not really afraid of anything at this point. Turn is a deuce of diamonds. And he's got about, I want to say, $70. So I bet 25. I try to size it small again so I can get them all in by the river. And um, he's got about 45 left at this point. I put them all in on a five of clubs river. So three makes a straight, but I don't think I have to worry about that too much. Plus I'm always calling if I check to him and he shoves. Um, but yeah, I just don't think he really has a three there very often. And uh, I bet 45 he calls with pocket jacks and, uh, and I win. So I started off hot, I'm up about $100 at this point. This was kind of a funny hand where someone opened and uh, I folded queen six and the flop came three queens. But not too much happened for a little while, it wasn't too eventful. This hand I get queen ten of spades under the gun. I think I could either 
I think I could raise or fold there. I really don't like limping. Um, so I just folded. This hand, I get ace jack, offsuit, in the big blind. A uh, few people limped, and I decide to make it 12. And they both fold. I think you can check there sometimes if you're in like a tougher game. This hand, I'm in the small blind with the queen of clubs and the jack of diamonds. There are several players in the hand. I think there's five. And the flop comes king, jack, six, all clubs. I've got a pair and a flush draw drawn in the second nuts. I bet six dollars and get one color. Now this player he could have a king, he could already have a flush. Uh, he has a pretty wide range of hands I think. He's an older guy, pretty tight though. Um, the turn is a seven of spades and I decide to check and he checks behind. Check. The river is a seven of clubs, giving me the second nut flush, but it is a paired board, so I'm not too concerned about that. I bet $10 for value. If I get raised there, I'm just folding all day. I think it's a big mistake to uh, check back a flush in that spot. Now this was interesting. My buddy opens the $6 from early position. He could have a pretty wide range of hands. He could have any suited Broadway cards. Um, obviously Ace King beats me and big pocket pairs. He could have anything from uh, sixes or better. So I like to just call. I think he has a pretty tight range from, uh, from early position. And then um, he see bet the flop and I folded. We went four way to the flop. This hand, I pick up pocket eight. Someone limps in. I make it 10. And they all fold. So this is a kind of interesting hand where um, one player limps in and it folds to me on the button with ace nine. It's kind of too good of a hand to uh, to fold and I want to take control of the pot so I make it ten and uh, the limper calls. The flop comes king jack six with two clubs and he checks to me. I think you could check back because ace high has value here. But I decided to just go ahead and bet, hoping that he would fold all pocket pairs, kind of smaller than jacks, other than sixes, and a lot of ace high hands. But instead he check raises and I fold. Alright, I pick up queens here. And um, a few people limped in. Uh, it's still a must move, so I'll be coming over. I believe I'm in the, in the blinds. I make it 15. The first limper calls. Everyone else folds. The flop comes ace six four. No suit. I decide to check. That's all. Uh, my opponent seems to be pretty tight so far. He doesn't really bet when he doesn't have it. Um, he checks back. I'm fairly certain I'm in the lead, but I don't really see a huge 
point in Check. betting here. I guess I could bet here small. Um, but I decided to check, and he checks back. So the turn's a four, the river is a nine. I'm like 90% certain I have a winner, so I decided to bet small for value. I bet $11, and um, he calls, and I win. Next hand, I get aces, and the same opponent who I played against last hand opens to $12 after the player under the gun limped in. So I make it 30 and um, he calls. The flop comes king 7-3 with two hearts. He actually bets out of turn here. It's $30. I make it 70. I want to keep him in. He has about uh, 180, he has 183. Once we, once he calls free flop, seventy. So I make it seventy, and um, then he just ships it. Call. I call, and he turns over. He turns over ace king right away. So I turn over aces. I didn't want to be a dick, <laughs> but he just drills the king on the turn and uh, he scoops up a four hundred dollar pot. So that was pretty brutal. I was about a 92% favorite, somewhere in there. And, um, and uh, yeah, it just didn't work out for me on that particular hand, unfortunately. So at this point, I'm now down about $80. I was up 100 before that hand. Maybe a little bit more, I guess. Maybe like one. 15 or 120. This hand I pick up pocket sixes um, after it folds to me and then I just pick up the blinds. Pick up pocket fours here. Uh, player limps ahead of me, I limp in behind, and then the flop comes and I fold. I'm here in the big blind with uh, jack five of clubs. The flop comes all clubs, comes nine, seven, four, three clubs. Um, the player under the gun actually bet five dollars when uh, it was my turn, so I just checked to him, and then I check raised to 20. He only had about $65 to start the hand, or $70 to start the hand. He looks like he just wants to shove, but uh, decides to just call the 20. It seemed kind of fishy, but I've got a flush, so I'm not really going anywhere, especially when he's only got $45 more left. Um, the turn is a nine of spades, so it pairs the board. I bet $35, pretty much putting him all in. He shoves and I call. And he's got king four of clubs, so I'm just drawing stone dead. Nice hand, bro. Alright, they call my name for the 2-5 and I'm out. Pretty excited to start this up. Fortunately, I didn't really get a hand and I was having some uh, some trouble with my phone recording everything. So in this hand, we're playing seven-handed. One of the players in, in middle position, I guess, makes it 10. And then one of the pros makes it 20. I call on the button. With, uh, with pocket nines. The flop comes 10, 10, 8 with two spades. The player who made it 10 checks the three better. He bets 35. And I call. Turn is a king, which is a bad card for me because he can have a lot of kings in his range. Um, and a lot of aces, and the ace, the, the ace comes on the river, another bad card, 
Uh, he checks turn, I check behind, river, he checks, and I check, and he has king, queen. All right, I've had a pretty odd day so far, but it should be interesting to uh, make the video. In 1-2, I lost $150. It seemed like I was running great in the beginning. I was off to a good start, I was up about 100, and then, um, yeah, I lost with uh, the aces versus ace-king on the king-high flop. He just drilled king when we got it all in. And then um, started playing 2-5, ran pretty cold there as well for a while. Uh, my phone actually died, so it stopped being able to record. But uh, right after it stopped recording, I picked up queens on the on the button. It folded to me. I made it 15. The small blind is a buddy of mine. He plays for a living. He makes it 45. Big blind folds. I called. Uh, flop came. Ace nine nine. Two spades. He checked. Um, I bet thirty dollars. He called. I didn't see any real reason to bet big there. At that point, I decided I was just gonna give up on the hand, thinking that he could have a huge hand here. Um, or, you know, he could have like kings too. Uh, the turn was a seven of spades, so there's three spades on board. He checks, I check. River was a 10. He checked and I checked, and he had aces full, he had pocket aces. So, uh, so that was a fun hand. A few hands after that, I pick up pocket jacks under the gun. I make it 15. A player just sat down and never played with him before. He makes it 45. Uh, a short stack calls. He had 360 to start the hand. Um, and then I decided to call. I could four bet in that spot, but I don't really know anything about the two other players, so I decided to just call. The flop came 10, 8, 7, rainbow. I checked. The three better checked. And um, the cold caller. He just shoved for 360, and it was a weird spot. He shoved 360 into 120. Didn't really know what to do. My initial reaction was to just fold. And so you could have a hand like queens there or something, but it just seemed too odd. Um, I looked at him. His chest was just kind of beating through his shirt, and he just was. He just didn't look comfortable at all. After thinking for a while, I decided to call, not really knowing what he had. I thought maybe he'd have like a hand like ace-king or something like that. Um, and then the pre-flop three better folded. The turn was the ace of hearts, so I just didn't think that I was beating anything at all. And then the river was a, was a four, and I heard the words that are my favorite words to hear, which were... Uh, I have nothing, I missed. And then he turned over pocket nines and uh, my jacks held up. So I'm in for 1400. I've got almost exactly 1400 in front of me and table seems diff decent. There's two other pros there and uh, a few other uh, pretty big fish. So hopefully I'll get a win. Uh, we'll see. So I just cashed out for fourteen hundred and ten dollars. I was in for fourteen hundred, and then uh, after you subtract my lunch expense and tropical smoothie, I pretty much broke even for the day, which I was happy with. I guess um, I think I played pretty well. Didn't run particularly well, especially in that uh, that ace's hand against ace king, but it happens. Um, yeah, I'm happy to be just uh, playing poker, I guess, again, since I took a week off. And hopefully tomorrow will go a little bit better. Hey guys, thanks a lot for watching the video. I know it was really long, um, but hopefully you learned something or got some entertainment out of it. Uh, I really enjoyed making it, so I plan on making some more videos in the future. Please, uh, you know, give me some feedback. And uh, if you enjoyed it, hit the like and subscribe button. Alright, thanks again.